All right, let's see. We have Grandma Dorothy, Grandma D, and then we have uh, Ramon and Tim joining us. Grandma D, is uh, Aunt Carolyn with you? Oh. Uh. Awesome. I'm not going to show myself because I'm eating. Yet, but the melody. Oh. You hear me? I said, get but the, the I'm chewing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's all good. Um, I guess we could uh get started. We got a, a small group, but I'm sure other people will jump on here. Um, let's see. Uh I know Grandma Dorothy, you're eating. So uh Grandma D, can you get us started? Uh oh, fade outside. Oh, upon my uh uh him doggy and uh they won't uh and start them all gonna I don't call the doggy the bag is high though they could get home now. Both them get go but they they get hired at the doggy. The doggy get all no they don't feel though. So the Kiago could get more hand up the doggy they go back back time and doggy. They go get gone but when they get time get a hold of Take up a hundred, get time get done. I'm in any town, town, but I'm the daughter, daughter, I don't get on. Or the better. I'm paid it, it's hard all the year and the old time go go and the old time 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 go you can commit later. They need a good argument. I'm paid. I own title. I say you can't pay. And they don't talk. I hope. I'm on mute. I don't think so. Who, Grandma? Can you hear you? Ask them, can I hear you? Yeah, they can hear me. Ask them. Can you hear me, Melody? Melody. Oh, we can hear you. Okay, okay that's all. <laughs> awesome. Oh, and hey, there's Grandma Martinelle and there's Courtney. Okay. Right. Awesome. Grandma D just gave us our opening prayer, so we just got started here. Uh -huh. I'm uh hovering here in the kitchen keeping an eye on dinner <laughs> um okay well let's see i know we have tim and ramon here and um i just wanted to see if anyone has questions for any of our mentors things for translation things like that hey yeah melody on day <laughs> Uh, yeah, Tim, I think you're on mute. No, we yeah, hey, I, I don't know um, if this is a good time or maybe at a Sunday session, but, you know, we're getting ready for, um, for our, we're, I'm going to take my, my class to, to the AOA and they're going to sing some Christmas songs and um, do like a little reading, but I was, and Pat's been coming over to the school and been going over a few songs. But she had Silent Night, but she didn't have the words, and um, and of course I don't. I have her record it. I don't know if if it either is tonight's a good night to hear it and try to do it, or if you want to try to do it Sunday when it's more kind of. I don't want to interfere with you know what you got planned. Oh, that's a good question. Um, and, and so there's it, several versions of Silent Night. Um, if uh. Would you be able to text the recording? Because then I can send you the words. Because we have several versions that we've learned. Okay. Oh. I'll send what uh, I she came over Monday and we recorded it, and I got her recording. And so I'll just send it directly to you then, if you want to just do that. Awesome. Yeah, and then I can uh, I can send you the the different versions that we have, the written versions. Okay. Yeah. Um. I couldn't find any of those, and then of course uh, I want one of my students to read it. 
The Christmas Story was composed uh, by Miss uh, Alicia Kibon Gonzalez. Um, oh yeah, that's a good I, one. I was wanting to. I don't know. Um, if it's not in Parker, and so um, oh, was, it's a Miss uh, Gonzalez uh, method. Yeah, and I didn't know if it could be um, put in Parker. I, I, believe it or not, it really it's almost easier to read Parker than it is. You know, <laughs> once, once you start reading it and understand, yeah. It is because of the diacritic marks, and you know where to put your uh, voice. And the I'm kids, glad to hear, they, hear that. Really like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. So, um, that um, you know which one I'm talking about. It starts off with um, "Hi, God, doll may." There was a time an angel came to a young woman. He sent his word. Does that one sound familiar? Or have you seen that one? Yes, you're right. I'm interfering, but I worked with Alicia. And I was just wanting to try to get that in Parker. So that way, because uh, what I want to try to do is get one of my, my students to say that, um, you know, when we go there, and then, of course, someone would translate. Hagigadome. No, akide. akide. Can you hear me? Once upon a time, the Kaibos were camping. That's the exact um, interpretation of what you're saying. Hagegadome is once upon a time. Oh, okay. So that's the way I start out my stories. So, um, how do you say the? Um, so I know that we had I had switched the Sunday sessions to every other Sunday, but like for this, uh, kind of like a project that Tim's proposing, um, I think that's something like we can. I know that those uh, Sunday afternoons are kind of like free on my schedule anyway, uh to to log in and to um kind of do a if we have several of us learners on there and we can do it in like google drive to put it to transcribe it into the parker mckenzie um version and then we would have a document and then we could verify it with our mentors that are on there would that work would that be okay sounds good okay and i got this from your your um site um melody oh yeah i think it's from uh that uh from one of the christmas uh outreaches we did right from a while back i uh, i'm not sure I just there was just a bunch of christmas stuff and i just went on there because we're trying to get ready i think we're, i think i'm taking the kids december the 13th and we're going to sing oh. like four songs pat's been helping us but then i wanted one of the kids to like do this story Oh, that's so I, special. I have one kid, oh, man, wow. she is really good. I mean, she is really, she learns real quick. And so she's scary how good she is. Oh, that's awesome. That's what we need. Yeah. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, Um, we could definitely. And I think that's something because I know, uh, like with my class, we'll be doing a uh, Christmas stuff. Um. I want to start that right after uh, Thanksgiving break when they come back from Thanksgiving break um, and kind of do some of those, listen to learning some of those songs. So I think that'd be good, good timing. So Sunday, I'll send out an invite so we can work on that uh, for Sunday afternoon. So Grandma Martha, Grandma D, Grandma Dorothy, I don't know if you'll be available, but that would be awesome if you're available to join on. On Sunday, yeah, probably the same. Awesome, hey, Melody. Sunday. Can I just play a little bit of what Pat singing that in Kawa, so then that you'll know which version I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, go ahead. Um, let me. I'm gonna spotlight you. That way, you'll be in the front of everyone's screen, so they should be able to hear it. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. I've never been spotlighted. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> he said, Spotlight in my eyes open fast. 
Ah, <laughs> cool. There you go. <laughs> okay, let me let me see. Heavenly Pat Coopsa and her sisters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what that was. So I don't know if you does that version sound familiar? Oh, that's the one that uh Miss Pat a few years ago before the pandemic, she taught those little guys at yeah. in the Anadarko yeah. and took them to Black Leggings to Tonkonga at the the dinner, the Christmas dinner. Oh, oh and yeah. that there. Oh, okay. Yeah, we we made a little song book yeah, for them. Okay, all right, good. Well, yeah, and Grandma Dorothy, I think you were there too. You helped them. Uh, the joy to the world in that one. <laughs> I said, thank you for mentioning my name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I have the lyrics for that one, so I'll um go ahead and oh, send man, those. Good. Him. All right, thank you. Yeah, and then and we have joy to the world on um, the lyrics to that. I mean, it's not in yeah. Parker, but we can, you know, we can. Well, and that's what we can do also on Sunday is we can put it up on the screen and transcribe it into Parker. Yeah, yeah. oh, that'd be great. Oh, Alrighty. Yeah. that's what I was wanting to know. So good. Thank you. Awesome. Oh. That's good timing. You know, uh, that's something I notice about my class. Um, sometimes when they ask for a word, we'll look at the glossary. We'll pull up the glossary on the big screen. And it's actually easier for them to read and pronounce Parker than it is for them to do the phonetics. Because um, when I try to do the phonetic, because for me, it was like, it was the opposite. It was easier to do like Miss Gonzalez or phonetics first and then Parker. But um, but yeah, those kids, those students, they really rely on those dichretic marks and they freak out when those dichretic marks aren't, aren't there. <laughs> They're like, which way are we supposed to go? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, let's see. So, okay. So we got a little project to work on on Sunday afternoon. So I'll send the invite out and anyone who wants to join on, um, we'll work on transcribing and getting ready for Christmas. I think that might help with our, uh, you know how we're doing that Christmas program for our outreach. It might help with that too. <laughs> Maybe, uh, maybe, uh, Tim, maybe we'd have to invite your, uh, that student that you're going to have read that story. Maybe she'd be interested in reading that story on Zoom for us. <clears throat> oh, I think you're muted, Tim. Oh, I, I bet she would, but, you know, she really uh, wanted in that Parker first. That's awesome. <laughs> well, we'll have to get it transcribed. Man, yeah, thank you. Oh, uh -huh. cool. Uh, good questions. Uh, does anyone else have any questions for our mentors? Oh, uh, only about outside. <clears throat> um. Well, this Friday, uh, the tribe's having a trunk or treat at the KCC or something like that. Um, and they want all the departments to participate. Um, and they want us to do like a game, I guess, for candy. Um, but what we ended up thinking about, we're going to take a dry erase board and then um, basically just say, you get a piece of candy if you can tell us a word. Um, <clears throat> And then if they're if the child is unable to or you know the kid's unable to, then we'll ask the parent if they know a word that they can teach the child to tell us. Um so but with that, didn't really know what to call it entirely. Um so I had a couple of phrases that 
I came up with wondering if they would be correct. Um, so I just wanted to kind of run them by and see, uh, I guess, which one would work best um, or what would be best for this event, I guess. So, uh, cool. Um, for, for the first one, I have Koitongia uh, dot table. Koitongia dot table. I guess I'm trying to say, tell us um, a Kyle word. <clears throat> um, and then the second one, Pa gotongia dot table. I guess that would particularly be saying like one singular word. Tell us. Answer in one word is what you're saying. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, and then the third one would be. Hate but koiton zan yi. Hate but koiton zan yi. Asking him to speak Taiwan. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, but goit dozani. That's another way to say but goit dozani. But goit dozani. Right. Yeah, speak in Kiowa. Oh. Talk Kiowa. Oh. Is that that hate kind of like a like a emphasis or like an emphatic. No, it's kind of like um, you should speak Kiowa. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, go the Tali. What's what's Tali? That's boy. Oh, good to hear, Tali. I tell him. I tell him, no. No, I don't. I tell him. Good to hear, Tali. I tell him, no. Ramon, I don't. Oh, I oh, you don't do him. Chapter. And bow, comma, honey, and comma. Oh. <laughs> I knew it was you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, so I guess out of those three, uh, would the best one be that? And it means. Talk Kiowa as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Oh, another way, uh, Ramon, is if you're asking them the question, you could phrase it like, um, 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 ain't, ain't, hold on a minute. Oh, I got something in front of me. I gotta move it away. Um, ain't going tail. You tell and me the, um, oh yeah you because know, you're gonna ask them a question and so you want them to tell you back the answer oh and Kyla oh uh, yeah and, and surely your parents, yeah surely your parents probably know something little something that the kids know they said tell, tell me what she's saying is tell me something in Kyla and yeah go ahead, don't they or yeah. and go ahead, don't say mm -hmm. you know or ask me Say, ain't say. Ask me, oh. tell me if you if you got the questions, you want them to answer back. Oh, so ain't say. Or ain't, ain't say. And say is question. Uh, if it's a question, if you're gonna t ask me something, you say ain't say. Oh, ask me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the other one was and koi ton tail. Yeah. Answer me back in Taiwan. Oh. Oh. Uh who? 
ออบอฮอนอ่าน้ออ่าอย่างออบอฮอนน้องอัดสไลด์ต่ออ That's awesome. Those are some good questions. That was good too. That was a good little series. I mean, series. That was a good little paragraph or whatever you want to call it. Please, yeah. Oh, I bet Ramon, you know. Ramon, are you gonna have a uh, like a a sign or like uh, handouts for them to to read it, or just you're just gonna be asking it to them? Um, more so, just be asking. Like, we'll have a portable whiteboard. Um, that it'll kind of say it in Kiowa, and then under it will be the translation, like mm -hmm. saying, "Tell uh, answer me in Kiowa," or "Tell me something in Kiowa." Mm -hmm. Um, and then I'll just ask them, "Can you say a Kiowa word?" Because they're uh little ones, and then if they can, then we'll give them a piece of candy. If they can't, you know, we'll try to ask if their parent knows one to teach them. If their parent doesn't know. Then um, Lance will be there to uh, give them one, also. Oh, yeah. awesome! I like that activity. <laughs> oh. Oh, hey! I was wondering who admin is. Hot huh? day, little admin. It's Dane. <laughs> Yeah, Dang. I don't know why it gave me that. It gave me that said said something admin, and I didn't know if it was set like that or what. But I just pressed OK, so I guess I guess you're game it. Doll. I guess you're it, Dane. You're the admin. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Awesome. Uh, we're just uh, fielding questions from any of our learners, and uh, we got some good uh, good things. Uh, Dane. I don't know if you have uh, any idea about this, but we just made plans with uh, Tim for uh, our Sunday afternoon time session to, uh, I guess Tim has some students that are gonna be going to the Kiowa AOA to yeah. do um, Christmas uh, singing. And he wants one of them to read the Miss Gonzalez Christmas story out loud. And yeah. but they want it, all this, his students want it in McKenzie and uh, not in uh, Gonzalez and phonetics. Okay. And so we're going to meet on Sunday and we're all going to, whoever's there, we're going to try to transcribe it together. Oh, okay. All right. Good. Yeah. So, uh, and then I guess uh, a couple of the Christmas songs too, right, Tim? Uh, Silent Night that Miss Pat sings. Uh, yes. Uh, Silent Night. And um, we got Joy to the World down, so that one's pretty easy. Uh, Silent awesome. Night too, but we just, I just want to get it. And, and Pat wanted it translated too, also though. Honde bachai. Honde. Nando honan. Onga. Henka doja. Ba omo. Edit. Okoi doja doja. Ba doja koma. Are you talking about the, like the tunes? The. Like uh, the one Louis Toivo yeah. sings. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah In fact, we have to sing that to let them see how it sounds, how pretty it is. We could sing that one for our outreach, but that's one that I'm going to teach my students in my in my class. They're going to be learning that a, Louis Toivo on one. On the language, I'm a purist, and I like I like. Why do we use their tunes? Joy to the world and. Silent night. Well, the first hymn is entirely Kiowa. The missionary asked Godabo to for a song, and he said he didn't. He was a Christian and do that. They explained about Christmas carols, and so he made the first Kiowa Christian hymn, and it is. Entirely Kiowa, the, the uh, <clears throat> missionary could have sung Christmas carols. She did not because she wanted it entirely Kiowa, I assume. So she said, she asked for it. So he made that first Christmas hymn. And it's, and I know that she heard them singing when she was, would go visit the camps during 
annuity times the Anadarko. She came from Wichell, Michigan. And she didn't sing Silent Night or Joy to the World or the other. She said, please make a song for Christmas in Kiowa. And so that's what he did. And if you know Kiowa, which most of you do, you'll know that the song uh, <clears throat> expresses what he felt. And so you know he knew the story. He knew what he was thinking about. And then later, his niece uh, put the Kiowa words to joy to the world. <clears throat> So the yeah, verse, I mean, first Kiowa hymn is, is not based on the English carol at all. And that was in 1893. Either way is good. I'm not objecting, but that's my preference. Why do we have to put the words to a, to a non-Kiowa tune? Oh. Probably because it gets cute. <laughs> Could you play it and let Tim hear it? Have you ever heard it? Uh, I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I think I've heard it, but I would like to. You're gonna sing <laughs> it, <laughs> I don't think. Mr. I don't think Miss uh, Yahula heard it either before. Have you, Courtney? Do you remember the uh, Louis Toybo Christmas song? Yeah. Oh. Uh, let's see. I'm going to see if I can find it real quick on YouTube. And do you have the translation on there so they can see the words? Oh. That's a, yeah. I think Thank sometime you. we got to all sing that also. Oh, yeah. It's, it's uh, got beautiful, beautiful words because they mentioned my favorite people, the angels. Oh, for sure. Yeah, that's a, um, I think that's a really, I like it because it's so, um, it's just beautiful expressions, just the way that everything's described. Uh, let's see, I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can find it real fast. Um, I have one somewhere here. I know we've done several of these, and I can put it up on a uh, on screen here. I'll uh <clears throat> find the lyrics. So let me see here. Where's it at? I think we did one in twenty twenty one, maybe. Okay. Somebody's talking in the background. Oh, some of them I have their uh TV on. <laughs> Mm, let's see. Okay. Okay, here I found the video. Let me I don't know how clear this is. Let me pull it up on screen with the lyrics. Uh, hmm. All right. Toy Okay, here it is. All right. See if I can do this. Um, share my screen, share video. Hopefully, hopefully you can hear it. 
Can you hear that? Yeah, I do. Okay. I got to make them sing it again so it's clearer, but I'll keep playing. That that was the first line. And it's pure Kiowa. Hey, God, today, day, ban bakaba, so saki and san ba hail. Yabong and day, hail, not a name, boy, bay, to a good dog. Tante, a yabakado, dog ya yam bay, do keep on song. Sound familiar? <laughs> yes. They even can't the, take that video. <laughs> even, the, even the tune is pretty. <laughs> um, but that's, Tim, uh, I can uh, send that here. I'll put the link in the chat here, but I could send the uh, that document, that handout. What you think, me? I uh hope. -oh. Doesn't uh, Freddie do that? Freddie calls that. Oh. Um, let me find the link. That's it. Julia has it. Julia has it. Put it back on and let's sing it. <laughs> I sound like a man. <laughs> <laughs> or put the words on there. Oh, hey, there's Nelson. Um, okay, I put the links in the chat, Tim, the um, the video, and then the Google Drive file where you can download that PDF. All right, Good I'm job. looking at it now. Awesome. All right. Uh, let's... Those children picked it up, you know, pretty pretty good, and it had wasn't heard no more, and it bothered me because we never, we never pursued that song. Oh, uh, let's see. There's Nelson, um, and Judy joined us as well, so Judy's on here. Um, Hande Batsai Ta. I want to uh, confirm something, uh, uh, question, a couple of questions. So some of my students, they're, they're making a little conversations for their, uh, one of their assignments. And one of the student wants to ask a question. Uh, she's making a little conversation between a father and a daughter. And the father is asking the daughter what's wrong. And so the, um, the the father wants to ask the daughter, "What is wrong?" So Hatsu Anatongya, what is wrong? And I was trying to find uh, something that could be similar in the glossary, and the closest thing I could find is something that sounds kind of like, "Are you getting into trouble?" <laughs> uh, but I don't know if that's like correct. So uh, I wanted to ask and see. Uh, I know it's not like. Well, at least I don't think it's a Kiowa question that we would typically ask, but um, I just wanted to ask uh, anyone if you knew how to say something similar uh, or ask that question in Kiowa. What is what? What is wrong? So like if a child comes up to you and they're like upset about something but they haven't told you yet and you're trying to get them to tell you what's wrong with them or what's going on with them 
what's bothering them, something like that. Just asking a child what's oh, wrong. Oh, you're sympathizing with them or something, like a little sympathy with the question. Oh. I'm on, no, no. You know, you're comforting the child as well as asking them. Or a Honda or... I just jumped in. It's not even my place. Go ahead. Y'all decide. I got a habit of that. I love to talk power. Oh, I appreciate that, Grandma. You said aim on on do. Aim on no on do. You know, if they're crying or something. No on do am all, yeah. On they call on. Ain't say, ain't they? Or something like that. Those are little, just little expressions. Ain't they? Non do him all, yeah? Or there's countless questions that sympathize, you sympathize with a child. I just sympathize with one that tore up all my freezer bags. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> he got in trouble. No, no. No, 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 I'm all. Yeah, when they call. Um. Oh, no, no, I'm all. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when they get disciplined in there. I just love being a grandma. Oh. Uh -huh, Come on, a lot of it. Yeah, uh, there's countless ways you can uh, expressions. In fact, it could be a lot of expressions to me. Instead of you know, how do you tell them? Just one certain sentence or something. There could be several. Oh, what you think, gang? Oh, um, and then uh, also probably, um, I guess, with those uh, expressions and, and things like that, um, you know, how would one respond? There's probably multiple responses to a lot of things, but just common things to go with them. Like, um, I was having a hard time with why questions because there's so many things you could say to a question with why. And so my students were asking me earlier this week, because I have it in some of their, in uh, a new kind of change to our, um, to our, uh, uh, to the PowerPoints that we're doing, it added non-do to it, but there's not a stock answer for that. So the only reason I would ask them that if somebody's trying to walk out of class for some reason then i might ask them that or or they they say they'll come up to me and and say um uh, i can't be here on friday but they won't tell me why and so you know i'll ask them non-do so that's really in when it comes to uh when it comes to putting in the context where them when they know it's where they know what it means um that's why I've asked them, but, uh, you know, I've had, a, of course, they can't really answer me back in Kai with all those things. So it's kind of beyond what they're saying right now, but I'm just trying to look for different things that they could say. Um, I mean, they could probably say something like, uh, um, I don't know, Dallas Guabanma, or they might switch, uh, throw in some um, English word, in, a wedding banma or something like that, because usually talking about something about being on wedding parties and things like that is usually why and they'll have to make up their work and things like that. Or, uh, But anyway, something like that with the non-do question, the different ways that you could uh, you could answer those and, you know, something that we're not going to use just uh, for a stock answer, but just some good examples, uh, I guess, if we created a uh, if we come up with a phrase, then we can ask all the speakers, everybody who's a speaker here, um, what are different ways you could answer, uh, like non doim alia. And so if they actually gave a reason, you know, um, I guess we could come up as as teachers right now, uh, what are some of the reasons that you would be crying? And then that, that way we can add it to our stuff. So what is it, my leg hurts, you know, and then add, 
or something like that. My my leg is hurting. Tone de and cope, you know, and then to kind of add it to where we're trying to go with those questions. Um, so I guess as teachers, if we were trying to answer it, may, maybe because I'm thinking about it as I'm talking right now, um, really not uh, adding in the answers yourself as you're doing the question, but adding them on here, think about what you would say and see if maybe the, there might be, and of course, keep it simple. Um, but how would you say that? Of course, I know I didn't know how to say my leg is, you know, I hurt my leg or I hurt my hurt something hurt my hand mon na kop or mon na kop da um but i guess as the teachers that are here and teacher trainees be thinking about some of your responses to some of those questions especially if it's an open ended responses cuz that would probably help us all and again i came to that because i wasn't thinking of that way until like 2 minutes into what i was just talking now so oh i like that um so like there's some uh like I know we have a certain way to say like I'm I'm hurt like in pain versus um so like I'm I'm hurt or I'm sad or I'm scared um are some like like emotion type words or responses that they might say to Nando Aim Alia. Um the other like something that uh I would ask my the students, the older the high school students is like a lot of times they have to leave like they get called out of class or something um and or they have to go make up a test during class or something they have to leave and so I might say like why are you leaving class so with that what I, I would say like Nando um what how, how would I say Hatsawana why are you leaving class or why are you going <laughs> I feel like I ask them hi I am Banma when they're start when they start taking off somewhere <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true that's true that's probably a a good or why weren't you here <laughs> like <laughs> oh, okay that's it <laughs> that's what i don't get why weren't you here or why why are you gone or why weren't you present what what is a way what's a way to say that There's so many questions and to cover that they they should know them all, you know, like Zoe Cope, uh Auto Cope da Daddy Nico. I toy get go money cope. I can think of all kind of excuses. Just for myself, but there's countless ones that if you had a little list it would be fun to learn that. No, what could you say? No, 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 no. Oh, yeah. Or you could say, Where did you come, right? Oh, yeah. Where did you come, right? Most of my answers tend to be as soft as I can make them. I wouldn't be long. Esther, I wouldn't be long. Admire you guys for being able to do your line of work. Or then you could say like, Key del Nando Honentano. Okay. Oh, see if I got, oops, I need to put that, take it off of. Knock it off of that real quick. I had it, but I sent it to the. I actually sent it in a. Dang, what you said? There we go. What have you said? I told my. <laughs> I was hiding. No, no, honey, Tano. That's a good one. That's a good sentence. Okay, so I sent three versions of, of three versions of that, and that's true. Anybody who's uh, when in that phrase "honim san" or we saying that you didn't come or you didn't didn't come to be able to put a tense to that or make it time time wise or the when that kido does actually work out for uh, because it means yes or kido yesterday. Why didn't you come yesterday? 
So some of those day terms would yes. work yes. out stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, that's right. awesome. It's really good, but all of those, there's so many different words could, that could go in there with all oh. of that, that line of questions. Melody, uh, we don't really know what the student wants to say. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the student just wanted to ask a question, um, like wanted to know how to say what is wrong. Like, which I, I mean, I, I don't know exactly how, like what they mean, but uh, yeah. they're trying to, I guess this, the way the student described it, the situation is in her little skit, the dad, the, the uh, daughter is struggling with something like she's trying to make, I don't know, maybe she's making dinner or, or making something and she's not able to do it by herself. And so she needs help. And so the dad comes in and is like, what's wrong? So I don't know how, like I was thinking maybe she could say something like, like when we say Hyundai, oh, mama, like, what are you doing? Um, but I don't know if that's getting at the same idea, you know? So I wanted to ask if any of you, if there was a way to say, like, I don't know, what's going on with you or... I don't know if you see someone who needs help, but maybe they don't, they haven't asked for it. Well, and then the other question is, uh, uh, how can I help you? And what I came up with, and I don't know if this is correct, so uh, tell me if this is right. Uh, exactly what you asked. How, how can I help you? But being Thai, it's kind of reverse. The why is first. Hatsu yanta umto. Hatsu yanta yanta umto. Yan. Yan. Oh, yan. Yan, sorry. Hatsu yanta umto. Hatsu yanta umto. Right. Aho. Awesome. Oh, hey, there's Alice Ann. Alice Ann wants us to know she's driving and she's listening in. So she's here, but she can't talk. She's driving. And I see Nelson also joined us. So yes. Nelson, Alice Ann, we're just kind of asking, uh, we're asking our mentors uh, questions for translation. Oh. So those are mine. Aho. I'll open it up for someone else. When are we getting with uh, with him for the Christmas carols? I didn't mean for people to lose touch with that first question. It was so sung, sung quite a bit. The Christmas carols. I just remembered though that there was the, that one pure Kiowa Christmas song. That's the only one I've ever heard. The one that he made about the angels finding, following the stuff, you know, the Christmas song. And I think that should be written or explained or played a lot more than we've paid attention because it, is, it was made by we're follow, trying to follow in their steps. It was composed by a Kiowa man. I'm looking at your picture like I'm talking to you. Oh. <laughs> What's the question? 
दर्शन आंदे मिस मैरियन वाव शी एस्किंग अबाउट ऑल क्रिसमस सॉन्ग वाव शी एस्किंग अबाउट क्रिसमस सॉन्ग the one that uh, what I was what I was trying to explain is there are in, in English speaking Christmas carols that the tune and the lyrics are lyrics are translated in Kiowa but the tune is regular but this other one that's the only one I ever heard that was composed by a Kiowa man with the with the lyrics and the tune Kiowa it's what makes it such that a should be nice. that's what I, I think that's to beautiful it's, it really mm. is and it never i heard it for the first time through this program it stuck with me because a melody took the the trouble to to record it and learn it she knows it real good well let her sing it can you sing it <laughs> Mel why don't you melody i'm um, no like it's that uh it's that one i was just playing the video um but it's that one that ah ba hey ga ya da me kya yo ki kya ka po yo e ta do de he ga ko de de kan ba ka ba so sa ki an san ba he ro kya ba wan de he ro na ta ne po be so gun ta Chante akya bak bado, dakya iyan pedo ki ponsan. Beautiful. The words are so pretty. I'll teach that. Go ahead, Dorothy, translate it. it the, she's got the translation. Dolores' uh, father composed that. That's beautiful. And it's a, there's the translation right there. I, in fact, it should be saying because it was composed by a Kiowa and used more regularly right. at Christmas. That's what should be learned. Smart. What do y'all think? Oh. In fact, that should be the theme song because we're uh, at Christmas. It should be used first, and then we can do our translations of the Tokoi uh, words. Just learn it first, right? I know it. I can't. I can't. This the it, the 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 tone is so beautiful. Songs are just right, and Melody has a good voice. Yeah, many songs. What you think, Dane? Oh, and I think uh, Melody. I think Melody had to. Uh, she had to step away for a second. Okay. So, um, so I'll go ahead and uh, and help. I just uh, got it. We're just messaging each other just a second ago. Um. Oh, she said uh, update language board. Uh, so uh, we will be uh, meeting with some of the uh, Kiowa, the Kiowa language uh, uh, program. Some of the employees try to uh, do a little organization of uh, basically some of the paperwork and files and 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 how to actually um, how to actually put those into put them all together so that both the program or both the uh, language program, the board that we know where they all we can kind of, kind of consolidate everything. Also uh, trying to figure out how to do the, how to actually evaluate the, um, the, these longer recordings that we have, because they're um, after listening to some of them, um, 
you know, the strictness or not so much kind of the strictness that in which we evaluate these uh evaluate these uh recordings. So um, it, this is mainly for the lesson two, because lesson one was pretty straightforward. It only had a few words and things like that that we could listen to, and it was pretty short. But lesson two, it's going to be a little bit, I mean, less not lesson two, but level two. It's just a little bit tougher because the stories are a little bit longer. Um, the parts that are uh, recorded... Um, that we have are actually longer too and so not everybody can actually just listen to them from home with everything with what they have now tech wise so I know we'll have to put on certain sessions during our meetings and they might be dedicated to actually listening more to those as we go through them as a board so um, trying we're gonna have to try to find different ways and or ways in which to evaluate these a little bit more uh, uh I guess objectively to a certain extent because it is a little bit different because you're having to do speaking and everything on there. So there is some leeway to that um, as far as um, as it goes with uh, pronunciation. There are things that we can fix. And of course, you can always redo any recording at any time you want to. So if you feel like, hey, at six months or maybe six months ago, I did that recording, but I don't like it now. Or a month ago, I didn't like the way I did that recording. I think I can do that and I can sound better in this one. Then I would say, go ahead and do it. Even if you pass that level two piece, which we'll have to do really do those updates in December. So I think even for people who are kind of questioning where, where am I at at that, I think that next meeting will be the best time to do that whenever people are there that way. Uh, when we're in person, we can kind of show people individually. And if they need to do corrections, they can actually do them there in December. That might be the easiest way to do this uh, since we're doing three of these sessions a year um, is to try to do it this way because it is a lot of paperwork, a lot of recordings and and I think what people are learning out of it is good. I think what just seeing the people here tonight and who's kind of sticking with everything and who keeps continuing to learn um, just by doing that. Um, I mean, as a board, we kind of know who's serious about a lot of it. And it's, it's much easier to make all the corrections and and uh, and kind of help everybody along so that their Kiwi gets better um, over time. Um, because there's a lot of things to think about when it comes to it. Uh, Tone-wise, I think what's going to happen is those recordings are going to help you all a long way. And eventually, um, some that are part of the Kiowa language program itself, the, the full-time employees and part-time employees, and then some of the uh, teacher uh, credentialees, we might at some of these um, some of these sessions where we all meet together, and we have some of these uh, interviews where this main part is seems to be the interview part, but also to try to get us all together in person, because that's really important uh, to try to get us better in person or together in person, too. Um, but to talk about actually collaborating with each other on making recordings, uh, things more accessible where people can actually uh, listen to what maybe some of us who are who are tech oriented a little bit more tech oriented you know probably get access to a lot more stuff and it, then maybe somebody who doesn't have internet access or they might have slow wi-fi or they don't have the laptop or uh, the type of phone that will play something a little bit easier that we'll have to kind of brainstorm on that, come up with new things and stuff that will go to our classes or our classes, maybe our um, sessions that are for community sessions or just our works together on this. I think it's important that um, we start collaborating a little bit and start getting into a little bit of making those recordings, which I know Right now, I'm having to do those for a for an online version of our class that's going to be asynchronous, which means I'm not going to be talking with them every day, but I have to make the right directions uh, for it so that they can learn the same stuff in in class 
Kiowa one uh, in in class in person Kiowa one class can do, and I can say that it is a I got a deadline tomorrow for it that I need to turn in, and making recordings like that is a lot of work. So it's probably going to take a lot of us to actually get together and do that. Even if we just do one little pieces at a time, we might. Um, when it comes to phrases like we were talking about earlier, we might get some of those recorded if they sound good, whether it's uh, anybody that you're recording that's a speaker or somebody who's a student who is saying the phrase and it sounds good. Like if you play it for a speaker, does that sound good? Do I need to change stuff? Then we can more or less uh, at some point use those as examples that we can use as um as a you know a variety of voices because a lot of that stuff is in my voice and the reason I have to do that is because sometimes uh just doing a set of phrases from lessons one through 16 can take about five or six hours and that's not even doing the question answer stuff or the translation stuff that's just actually saying them because you have to put them on you have to put them on a reel. You have to get them recorded, everything like that. But I will say in classes with those kind of materials, uh, it's actually getting people by really well. And they're using reading as a good tool. Um, but those uh, recordings are actually taking them way farther. So you don't spend as much time teaching like ABCs and stuff like that. They'll get it as they're going along, but they're actually picking up the language a lot better. And it just depends on how you put that together. So, um, uh, you know, it, it's going to take a whole nother session to kind of explain that about how to do recordings and how to, how to do it where they're going to actually work. Um, I think a lot of programs and a lot of uh, CDs and language programs have something similar um, and but they just don't have it in the right order where it's gonna you know get people to where they understand the language or where they can interact in the language there's got there's a certain way that it has to has to go but that's something I think as teachers um, would be good for us to get to know how to do that even if we just do one little, little pieces of it in our in our uh, in our um, in our materials and curriculums and stuff like that well, that we make um, if we learn how to do that, especially those of us who uh, have the tech to be able to do that. So, and I'm going to kind of going on long on that, but that is going to be an important issue that, that uh, is going to come up because it'll speed a lot of what we're doing in our classes up and probably speed, uh, probably help us, you know, learn a little bit faster as we go along. Because a lot of times when you're teaching these, if you notice, you're probably learning it a lot better and faster because you're having to teach it as any, any one of us who's, who's a teacher right now. And then the other part of that is the pulling the words apart. I know in uh, when people are learning for the first time, when they're pulling those words apart, it really does help them uh, figure out what's going on in the sentence. And although we haven't had a grammar session because... Uh, we can do that, but I think it has to be people who are dedicated to really learning the grammar. It really can't just be a session out of nowhere because they kind of got to stick with that part. So that's why it's kind of hard to do in a session like this, because it really has to be something that people who are really trying to learn uh, have to do that. So one of those things, um, maybe if you're coming up with your own curriculum, stuff like that, if you're using something else, um, I don't think I have it in there just yet, but it's where they pull all the words apart. And so you can see what how they're labeled. And then maybe you bring that kind of stuff where you pull the words apart and then we can, then I can kind of help, help you edit that. And I can tell you what this, what word, this word means and you know, all the grammatical stuff that has to do with that. But I think for anybody who's a teacher right now, that would be good to do with a lot of your materials is take it, take all the phrases that you have and start pulling them apart. And I'll help you go ahead and edit those uh, types of things. And if, when we come to a session like that, because um, I think there's a easy, easier way to learn grammar that way, where it's a little bit more practical with what you already know, rather than just me, just giving you just random stuff and saying, Hey, this is a pronoun, this is a verb, da, da, da. I mean, that will help, 
but I noticed in 15 years, it doesn't always stick or um, we never really get back to that area. Um, so I think those are two things we got to think about as teachers making those recordings as all the, especially of our own, of our own materials and then start pulling those apart. Um, I'm going to try something with that and hopefully it, it helps, but I'll go ahead and, and see if I can get an example version of all those uh, for lessons one through 16. I just got to figure out which folder to put it in because I have a better version of that now. Um, and we'll see how that works out. So I just have to edit it just to clean up just a little bit. So if you've got any questions about what I was talking about, let me know because I did go from uh, talking about the board and then us having to reorganize and us having a meeting to uh, teacher trainees and what we should be starting to do, or teachers, the ones who are teachers, what we should be starting to do with our curriculums as we're making them uh, to enhance them a little bit. And I think it's good, tedious, but it it should help. So, oh, aho, Dane. Uh, Monday, Monday, and fatal thought, Dane. Um, so one of the things that I'm really excited about doing is kind of doing like a a grammar, I guess, lesson with my with my class. And so right now they've been. Uh, let's see. I think we're on. We're basically, we're in unit three, which is kind of lesson three, I guess, as far as like the language content that they know. Um, and they're, we're really like trying to get a lot of practice with asking each other, you know, how you're feeling, how are you doing, um, getting to know each other, like using the help phrases. So that's been a lot of their focus. Um, and so as we've been going, we've also been practicing like the, how how pronouns work in Kiowa and how we talk about different groups of things and different, you know, animate versus inanimate. And so I have this idea. And um, so I've been researching like Montessori curriculum. And in Montessori curriculum, the way that Montessori, the Montessori method teaches grammar is they use, um, they put like little shapes above words and then as the kids learn, um, like if they're like learning about like the cat ran, uh, then like the verb might be like a circle and the, the the might be like, I don't know, a triangle. There's different colors and shapes that they use. And then the kids basically, when they're putting sentences together, they know that, okay, a sentence has to have these things. It has to has a ver have a verb. It has to have like an action. And then it has to have an object of the action it has to have someone doing the action. And then so they find those and they put them together and they make sentences. And that's how Montessori method teaches grammar. So it's it's really different from how like in third grade we learn, oh, this is conjugating a verb. <laughs> like it's like there's what is it, present participle and past, like all these like crazy terms that in English don't make any sense. At least they didn't to me when I was little. Um and I know that my, you know, when I'm talking to my students and I'm like, okay, this is a pronoun, um, I lose them because they're like, they don't even remember what it means in English. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking about like using some type of color coding or um, using like the shapes that um, like little symbols to signify the type of word and then using the pronoun charts and then using the verb types because they know how to use the glossary and they know to look for the verb and they know that when they find the verb, they have to go to the pronoun chart to find the right pronoun. But now how do you put a sentence together? And so they would always have to, you know, you couldn't have a pronoun without a verb. You have to have both of them in a Kiowa sentence. And then um, you have to have to have, you know, some whatever you're talking about. So that's what I was thinking. And so, I don't know, it's just an idea. And I'm trying to like mess around with creating some lessons around that to introduce it to the students. Now these are high schoolers, but they are pretty much like infants at Talking Kiowa. So <laughs> that's, that was what my thinking was anyway. Oh, see, um, um, what you could use a lot in there is what your art, the sentence, first probably start with the sentence. I mean, there's a way to do it and you can show them stuff with uh, 
where you're trying to focus on stuff with the pronouns and it looks like uh, feels like you're already probably already doing that the the other way when you're doing the opposite way is um whatever phrases you're using for for your other part so do you are you using the conversational that that you're using here is that what you're okay yeah. so, basically lessons one through four is what we've learned so far so that's okay. the language that they know so uh, since you having to do the glossary of course you always start backwards on a lot of stuff so anybody especially a teacher uh who's going to try to learn grammar a lot of times you need to translate in kiowa or a lot of other native languages actually it's it's better to translate from right to left instead of left to right because there's a lot of information that's going on just because the way we think in english uh you know we're looking we, we like to start from left to right because that's how we read um but um that might be a thing that oh we'll talk about it at some point but i think uh that translating right to left is going to be a, th a piece and for any teacher trainee that does actually do that stuff and split their words apart and 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 tries to translate on their own um i think that can go into more in depth once once we get some of those pieces together so uh, then i'll be able to explain it to you a little bit better so i don't bore everybody oh. else <laughs> I guess I guess that was a long way of me saying that I'm interested in participating in the grammar, whatever grammar initiative you're working on. <laughs> okay. And, and may I ask a question? Oh, um, on there. How are we in a position when you know there is no word that you've ever heard for one particular? And the higher up people tell you to invent the word and oh yeah. Oh, how can we we can't do that? And I just thought about a word while I'm sitting here and I'm gonna give you an example. I already I already discussed this with Dane. Oh boy, toy good. So does anybody know what that means? No. Oh boy, toy good. So that's a kind of talk. We have one student that came on talking that kind of Kiowa. And it's it's wonderful because it's part of old Kiowa that we already got over. That's the kind of Kiowa I'm mixed up in. And then I get it corrected a lot. Pardon me, I'm I'm talking. Part of old Kiowa, I get a lot of people saying, no, that's not the way you say it. Who are they? Why do I say, come and help us. If you think you can talk, we've got five that are professionals. And if somebody gets, when they finish this course, they're ready to teach it. And, and on their way, uh, how, uh, who has the right to come and tell us how, why, or demote somebody because they won't go and go and change a word that never existed? I don't know if I'm coming out clear, but I think all of the, the people that are running this program should be required to take a course of this. Because when we graduate these people, as far as I know, they're ready to teach it. Because they're taught by some of the five of the best Kiowa. I say some of Kiowa speak it. You've got, uh, I resent being corrected. And especially online, or they'll say, no, we're doing the best we can. And don't correct, or if you're going to be there to, I'm going to write this. I'm not, uh, I'm not just telling you guys, you know, and they're not in the, no position to tell us how to talk it. And I was, I thought, oh boy, toy good. So I was going to, uh, I was going to change the subject. I said, out of the blue, Marion knows what I'm saying. Dolores knows what I'm saying. Martha knows. And it's like, of all things, you know, or something like that. Oh, boy, toy good. So I was going to 
change the subject and I stop myself. I've done that a lot. That's my problem. We're teaching the best because they're learning it. And we're the most fluent speakers with maybe a hundred more other Kiowas. And all I can say publicly is come and help us. We will never finish it, but then they won't keep, you know, if we keep getting, and and to me, the, all of the people taking this course are, we've got the cream of the crop and they're with their ancestry and their access to the Kiowa language. And, uh, the gentleman I was talking about was Nelson Big Bo's grandson. I helped somebody else. Uh, I took him as a special uh, help, and he turned on us. I was just doing it for a job that these guys are be qualified to teach it. That's the way I feel. I just, I almost gave up. But. I'm doing this because I love it. And I love all you people, and I think you all have really, really took something that you didn't know and made, made I just sound it when I hear Melody talking or one of you. And Dane has been at this a long time. We have really, really worked on it. And then to be to be kind of no, criticism doesn't hurt me. I'm used to it. But please know that we're behind you in our thoughts, and they should be required to take Kiowa if they're going to correct us on Facebook and everything. Kiowa means we're trying our best to teach this. And praying every night that, and proud when you hear somebody says a word or they do a sentence or like Tim presented his program tonight. I, it just really elates me. And however long I'm with y'all anymore, I'll do everything I can to help you. I had a long talk with Dan last night. That's why he knew. I hope. Oh. 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 I agree because there's a lot of words that it's just such a huge vocabulary. Like you are over a couple of words. Oh, yeah, that also brings me to it. Now I just started thinking about that because we did talk about it at our earlier this month at our uh, last uh, board meeting. But I, I know in some sessions and different sessions that we have, different people, uh, uh, you know, some the program itself, uh, the Kaiba language program has access to the, uh, to the um, Kiowa, I was like, I can't even think, KCP, Kiowa, is it KCP? And I can't even think of what the Kiowa program. Kiowa program. Yeah. Oh, have a cultural program so it's good that we have more people here to talk about that how um figuring out who doesn't have copies of those uh i think we need to know because it's because i think that's going to be a big discussion that uh we also need probably to have with, between with the board the program and we, we probably need the museum there because museum holds the uh the main copies of those but uh, i think those especially the, all the people here um to get a copy of those there's a lot of people here that would definitely trust that they once they get a copy of them that they'll actually listen to them um there's times whenever sometimes you give a copy out and it kind of gets lost and gets falls under something but uh for the most part somebody's serious about it you know they're going to want it or if they gets erased or something you know they'll come back and and take it and get to it but um it, it kind of goes goes down to for all the teacher trainees and current uh currently uh credential teachers and and uh 
everybody out there is when it comes to learning Kiowa, it seems like I feel like it's get a better benefit off of worrying about, I worry more about how are things said by Kiowa people uh, how how do kind of people say stuff with all the stuff that is written down, recorded, and then while all these set different sessions are doing um, throughout the week, really, uh, that different different individuals here are part of all these different sessions. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, but as a learner, uh, it's learning learning Kiowa and learning it from uh, not being able to speak it at all at one time, I found it if I found it best to worry worry most worry most and put most importance on what Kiowa people are trying to say or what Kiowa people are saying and a little bit less on what you want to say because it's probably going to be more English influenced not saying that there's not things that um that you can get translated that you want to say um last a lot of times I, I would say keep it simple don't make it too complicated on yourself. And if you don't, and there's not a translation, don't, don't get discouraged by it. Just be patient because it, eventually you're either going to run into it or or uh, you'll find out why you can't do it. And, you'll, and there, there's going to be another way to actually describe that or say that or uh, th there's other ways. Or you'll find out it's not even important to talk about that at all anyway. And sometimes it does go to that. I was like, you know what? I don't actually have to talk about this. We just seems to be an English thing to talk about. Da da da. You know, um, and you'll find that I know. Uh, again, for some people, probably preaching is a choir here, but if, I I just think it's probably more important to uh, really think about. Okay, what well, what do we have in recordings that Kaiwa people are saying? What are our elders telling us here? And really go off of that. And that's kind of my big push for everybody who's a teacher who's making their lessons to go ahead and divide out your uh, go ahead and divide out your words and try to translate those get get those kind of word by word stuff for your own kind of more for your own benefit, not really for everybody else to have to see unless you find a good way to do it. Um, but so that you know what order is being said, how they're saying it. There could be a why they're saying it that way because a lot of times you do that, and that's what that's kind of what um, you know the good questions that we can get while, while our uh, mentors and all our elder mentors are still here because of course we're not going to get that um, fifty years from now, so you know kind of get it w when we're doing it. So, uh, but that's just I mean you know, that's just that's just kind of what I think about it is uh, focus more on what kind of people already say not what somebody else is saying outside and you're trying to make it that. So, oh, oh. oh. so, uh, along those lines, Jane, um, when I first was, uh, thinking about, you know, trying to really commit to learning Kiowa, I went and asked grandma D. I said, grandma D, I want to learn to talk Kiowa. Can you teach me? How can I learn? And she said, well, there's these tape recordings. There's these tapes. Listen to those. They'll teach you how to think in Kiowa. You need to learn how to think in Kiowa first. And so that has been like the greatest asset I think that we have as a people is we have those. And on Sunday sessions, when we've listened to them and translated them with our all of our mentors here, one of the things that keeps getting repeated, and it's all in Kiowa, right? So there, there, there's not a whole lot of English speaking in there, so it's all Kiowa. And in those recordings, you know, when they're praying and when they're talking and giving their speeches, they say over and over again, we're doing this for the future Kiowa people. We're doing this so that Kiowas in the future will know how to think Kiowa and how to be Kiowa. And they'll know how to, so to me, I take that really seriously. And it's been very, um, I guess, inspiring to listen to those recordings and to be able to hear and hear our mentors interpretations of them and then also even the tedious thing of going through line by line to try to transcribe those recordings has just been so like I guess powerful for as a learner to really understand all right this is like an actual like this is how we think so I agree with that and that was um a long time ago when I was first trying to learn <laughs> that was Grandma D set me on that path. I'm like, all right, well, I guess that's my goal. It's 
someday I want to be able to understand all those recordings. Um, but that's, I definitely think that we should think about ways to leverage those as a resource for, for us, especially for those who are credentialed and who are teaching. <clears throat> and well, if you don't, I will oh, say. Oh, go ahead. Well, I will say that they're 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 priceless. All, all of those recordings, and if you just like. I mean, just listen, and you get the the tone, and you go on, and every while after a while, you hear words, and uh, they're uh, as Melody said that they all will say why the participating, and that the future Kairos will know. What they did and why they did it, and all those things are you'll uh, because they're they're discussing the culture, and there are still words like, for instance, I have a phrase that my father said when he was uh, asked to speak at the end of his ninetieth birthday, and I did I regret that I did not ask him at that time what he meant. But I knew most of what he said, but I did not. So he's not there and no one else knows what he said. Cause I've asked elders before with sort of after. So so what I'm saying is it's there. We need to grasp it. We need to work on it. And I, I enjoy listening to them all the time because they the way they express themselves and the way they they get across what's on their heart. Yeah. That's Kiowa with them. That's a Kiowa way. So anyway, I just saying I agree with Dan and Dane that that you what else do you need? You have these Kiowas speaking, telling valuable giving you valuable information so we have that you look at other tribes they don't have it they do not have elders of that age because i have a i know the comanches don't so uh, <clears throat> so the kai was had foresight enough to as for volunteers and these people agreed to give their time, their knowledge. So I'm very grateful for those. And <clears throat> time will come when they they'll be there and no one no one will know what they are saying. So they're saying that yes, the future Kaiwas will say. Well, I didn't know that that's the way Kai was were. I didn't know that this was a Kai way of thinking. I didn't know this is a Kai way of doing things. So, so anyway. So they're there for us to learn. We're the mentors are learning. That's why I say we're learning with you along with those recordings. <clears throat> And then I was also going to add, um, because I know that a lot of people, there's there's still people here that don't have access to those recordings, at least that they can control uh, what they want to listen to on a daily basis. Um, but when we're able to get that kind of sorted out uh, and you do get those, um, definitely, definitely say to anybody who is learning, 
is when you first listen to those, you probably won't understand a lot of what they're saying. You'll pick up words and things like that. And you're not going to magically know 100% of it overnight. I never know if I'm ever going to uh, know 100% of what they're saying. Um, but with time, you're going to pick up little things and and little things over time and pick up more and more. And uh, it's and you also pick up the pattern of speaking, how people talk, you know, um, there's ways to write tones and things that we do, and those are good, really good aids, um, but also just as good and even better uh, is the actual listening to somebody and how they say certain words and the kind of the tone in which they say them. Uh, you can easily shadow somebody speaking and every now and then I'll, I'll pause it and I'll say what they just said and then I'll unpause it and then try to say what they said exactly as they speak as close to exact as, as they're speaking it, which is the whole purpose of the of the pronunciation part of our um, of our credentialing process. That's what that's leading you to It's actually it's actually the purpose of that is actually to lead you into those recordings at, at some point. Um, but whatever you don't understand, it doesn't matter if, if you, once you get access to those and you let those play, let them play. Don't get frustrated if you're, if you're not picking it up. And probably the, one of the first, uh, first things that you're going to do and you're in, you have to figure and you have to kind of learn how to get over that is trying not to translate in English in your head for everything. Cause you're not going to be able to keep up with it. Just know that you recognize some words. Eventually you're going to recognize some more words and eventually um, you'll start getting the context. There are already um, some people who uh, weren't speaking Kai when they grew up, uh, but they heard it growing up and they understand what, what it is. And then some that spoke when they were younger and they understand everything. And then there's some, those that are just learning it. So they're kind of, their understanding is at different, everybody's understanding is going to be at different levels, but in it, it takes time. It takes listening to them. So listening to something, of course, we know that by doing stuff once a week, you know, we're not going to retain everything that is there, but listening to those and having access to those multiple times a week and with the vocabulary that we've already been kind of learning, you pick up a lot of that stuff in there and a lot of it gets repeated over and over so you get to hear it a lot again. So uh, I, th I think um, um, uh, that I think that's the main thing that one of the main advice for somebody who once they get those recordings and learn them early, don't turn it off and get frustrated by it. Just let it run. Um, the way I had to teach myself to be, to be honest, I, the, the way I had to teach myself to, to stop just trying to translate in my head and thinking stuck and not listening for two stuff where like, uh, 30 seconds, because I'm sitting here trying to worry about what they said first is I kind of had to fall asleep with those on. Cause then my brain would calm down for a second and I could, at least for five to 10 minutes, I could, I could hear it. And and this that's just something that I did. It's it, and everybody's brain is actually going to work differently on this one. But this is one th one way that I had to kind of figure it out as my brain calmed down for a second. I kept I, I learned I'm not to stop trying to translate that in my head, but just let it run and just listen to it. So, um, and after a little bit, that's probably after about a year. Then it took me about a year just to have my brain calm down enough to where. Hey, I, I, hey, I kind of get the context of what they're saying or say, hey, I understand more of what they're saying. Hey, I understand a lot more of what they're saying than I did last year. Uh, and then this gonna it's probably it, it has to be one of our greatest recorded resources that we have. I mean, I think I mean, I think it is I think there's so much of it. So it's got to be our greatest recorded resource that we do have over the language. All right, oh. Any questions from anyone or updates? I have a question. Okay. Is there a, a glossary that goes from English to Kiowa? Instead of like, you know, if you, if you make it, <laughs> if you make it, okay. 
sometimes I know we try to find an English word or something, and it, it's just like, you know, kind of, it's hard to find in that glossary sometimes. Well, uh, I what my opinion, I, Dane made the glossary, so, you know, but in my opinion, using the glossary and also working with my students and my kids and me just trying to use it is the glossary is Kiowa first because it's forcing us to think in Kiowa. And so if I'm looking for an English word, like for instance, today I was trying to find, you know, wrong, the word wrong, because I was trying to translate for that student who wanted to ask a question, what is wrong? And I, when I was looking up the word wrong, that we don't have a way to say that. There's not just one way, because that's a very English thinking term. And so I had to like kind of step back and think, all right, well, what's a Kiowa way of saying this? Like, do we have something similar? That may not mean exactly the same thing. And so to me, the glossary forces us to kind of think more in Kiowa and put English on the back burner. But that's just, I always start by, you know, finding, use starting the word that someone's asking for and then find something similar and then explaining why we can't find the exact translation. <laughs> anyway, Dane, go ahead. That's just my, how I use it. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, basically, uh, uh... While I was thinking about, it, I was like, "Well, I'm gonna continue to maintain the Kiowa glossary and and trying to update that when I can. It's real slow now um, to do that, but you know when I can. But I won't. I don't have any problem with somebody taking that glossary and doing it the other way around because whoever is doing it, any teacher trainee or group of teacher trainees that want to do that, it's really gonna help them learn a lot. So if you really do want to do all that." Right, write all that stuff down. It is going to be really helpful. Uh, like if you have it in a Google Docs format or something like that, then um, it'll help you learn a lot of vocabulary as you go along the way. And I, and so you can use that as your basis because I'm not I'm not planning on turning it out into the English because I don't want to do that a second time. Because I was I was a a lot of uh cramping hands and and uh uh late nights so uh but i also i don't i don't want to hog all the learning on that either so let's just say that if another teacher training wants to do it and maybe if the Kyra program wants to uh push more of a english one to use what at least what's on the current one i, I think that's fine a good question good question nelson uh nelson did you see uh dane put in the chat that the the um harrington vocabulary of kiowa language has a good uh english to kiowa a oh, good start. oh and that's available it should be in the google drive resources but um judy has a question and I, this might be for you dane uh how do we obtain the recordings that's what we're going to go. That's why I think one of the big discussions we're going to have, and I would think that's that's when we meet with the Kiowa language program, and I think maybe we need to invite the museum. I know both have, uh, you know, we're both kind of under uh, interim, uh, interim directors at the moment, but I guess we could, we could probably, um, we could probably discuss that because it's, it's too important right now to not wait anymore on that to try to at least get it in in, in some format. I, I know that the Kiowa language program does have permission to use those. So as as an extension of the Kiowa language program and the teacher trainees as kind of an extension of the program, all we need to do is discuss that and see if we can uh, you know come to agreement. Can the uh, teacher trainees get those recordings and how do we do that? Um, I got some, like in my head, I got, I got, I got one main stipulation about that, but uh, I'm going to discuss that, uh, discuss that when we get to that meeting. So, um, and it has to do with a uh, participating, participating, and and uh, it has to do with a participation issue in there. Not an issue, but just a uh, basically how much uh, more has to do with the effort, the effort, the effort to actually get those. So I don't know if we'll have to do it through a contract or or how how to do that. So we'll discuss it. And 
And uh, uh, so that's pending. I guess the, the answer to that it's pending. But I think we were trying to get we're trying to make that happen as soon as possible. Oh, I hope. Awesome. Uh, let's see. I know we're like over time, <laughs> but uh, it's a it's good discussion. Uh, are there any other uh, questions or anything anyone would like to share before we get ready to close up? All right. Um, so on Sunday, this Sunday, I'll send an invite out uh, to the regular, to the Sunday group. So if you're on that list, um, you get those emails. Um, but it'll, a session will be specifically looking at uh, transcribing the uh, Christmas, uh, was it Silent Night and uh, the uh, Christmas Story by Miss Gonzalez. Uh, the items for Tim's uh, lessons for his class into uh, the modified McKenzie version. And so we will work on those. So whoever wants to join, we'll be doing that on Sunday afternoon from three to five. And um, other than that, we will uh, pick up practicing uh, next week, but um, we'll go ahead and uh, I guess get ready to close up for tonight. Um, so let's see. Uh, Grandma Dorothy, can you uh, close us up? Uh, Bay dots, I... Okay. The only. I hold the okay. On the only day, a car day. Now, on time. I'm time to get yonder. Do do it get come to. I got go to cook the um there. I got to go be tired of the. I cook the. I'm all going to be tired of the. Can you get cook? I got to go to the higher to the bar. Be tired of the. Yen high get the. I go in high, get a thick up the the tide of the yeah, it take a bin, but yeah, it's the bun. The tide of the honey arm go to. I go in high, get a dog, but they can have a daily over the um, I'm in the get turn on me, they know a hole. I get the. I can't go. On the only go I can't go. Hate to go. Ate my ham. Go I don't get my ham. I'm I'm the tired of it. I get from the top. I got cry about it. Get high get up. Try get they don't come to lay on it. They don't tired of it. I get the Tokyo okay, Thunder. The tide of the Aho. I can't pay the same thing. Oh, oh. 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 Uh, I guess we'll uh, pick this up. Uh, we'll practice uh, next Wednesday and then we'll see those of you who are able to join on Sunday. So, all right. We'll have a good evening. Um, hega ba oi dong ta ta. Hega ba oi bong ta. Oh. 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 Oh.